Hi everybody, this is Daisy on the PlayStation 4 and this is our Nitrado private server and this video is going to be all about how you survive for the first hour or you know, how <laughs> one of the ways that you could do it, how I tend to do it. Now, because we're going to be on our private server, I don't really have to worry about um, getting shot by other people. Um, because we're, we're a friendly bunch and even in the um, dangerous zones um, people aren't gonna I'm gonna shoot fresh spawns so my first priority is always to find food and drink and that for me means running along the coast um, going through these little boats that you find because they can be really good for finding food and drink just enough to get you going because um, you don't want to end up going through a town or a city starting to die um, because you haven't got enough food or drink where normally if you spend five ten minutes just going along the coast don't go towards the city just go along the coast um, away from a city if necessary there'll be no zombies here to shoot you let's shoot you to eat you um, and you should be able to find at least a couple of tins of food or drink um, have something else to drink get get your health up to the maximum and then you can think about the next um, priority which is um, finding out where you are and then get starting to get looted up so we want things like uh, better clothes a backpack uh, a weapon um, and then we can think about where we want to go next right let's eat our apple the other cool thing about the private server is that I've got it set up so that the days last about six hours and the night only lasts 15 minutes so you don't have to worry about getting caught in the dark or spawning in the dark the chances of spawning in in the dark are very low and if you did you know you just quit out and go and get a cup of tea then when you come back it'll be daytime again Might as well check this house because it's really close to the beach. Oh, plastic bottle for water. Shotgun. <laughs> Not bad. Let's get back down to the beach looking for goodies. Now even if you get thirsty at this point, do not go and drink out of a river or out of a, the sea, if you can even do that, or um, any standing water. The only water you ever want to drink on Daisy is out of a pump, you know, one of those pumps you find in the villages and the towns, or cans of pop. Um, and then obviously you can fill your water bottles in your canteens. There we go, got some tuna. Got a dry bag. Anything in the dry bag? No, but we can eat this can of tuna.
Okay, so there's another house close to the beach, so we might as well check these out. is a nice little town here so let's just check the beach just to see if there's any more boats so yeah there's another boat down there there we go we've got some canned sardines I think the problem with canned sardines I don't think you can't open them with your bare hands can you no but any of the cans are a nice weapon Let's just have a quick look down there, just make sure there's no... Right, okay, so we've got some sardines, we've got a water bottle. So what we can do now is we will loot this town carefully. Now the one thing I would say is, well, don't worry too much about not having a weapon. The, the dangerous thing... Um, about zombies is isn't the fact that you might find one of them because even with your hands you you know you can defeat a zombie fairly easily bk18 is that a shotgun is it it is isn't it um you can just all you've got to do is make sure when you're taking on zombies just aim at their head and even with just your bare hands you can knock one zombie out really quick the danger with the zombies is where there's a pack of them you know, say a zombie, you decide to start running away from a zombie and they start chasing you and you run past another zombie in fact I'm going to take that lock because that might come in useful in the future yeah so, so don't be afraid of just, just punching a zombie out you know don't keep running away from them just punch them in the head um, right so now we've got a nice can of coke so we can drink that. all about getting resources just enough to so that we don't have to worry about starving to death or dying of thirst and then finding out where we are okay so there's a larger city th that way um, can we see the sun can't see the sun but what I do know is there's a road over there there's a petrol station there. So chances are if we head to that road, we'll then be able to pick up a town sign or a road sign and we'll have to figure out exactly where we are. I need to start thinking about zombies now though. Probably our shoes as well. Let's have a look. Uh, they're still pristine, that's good. But if I find some spares, I want to put at least put them in my bag because you do go through shoes pretty quick, especially the, uh, the shotgun, especially the trainers or the sneakers, as our American cousins would call them. I haven't had a sharpening stone in a long time. So this is a bit of an industrial area here, really. 
we're not going to find much in terms of food but we might be able to find a nice melee weapon this is a guard house chances are we'll find like police uniforms maybe a weapon depends how lucky we are gone cleaning kit pair of binoculars Mike. Gas, don't need that. Don't think we need a dress. Remember to always look in the boots and inside cars. The loot tends to be well the loot is contextual in Daisy. She so tends to find stuff we'd expect it to be. So the obvious one oh got some Some uh, shotgun shells. I can't remember how to load them now. Here's a shotgun I've got into it. Oh no, it's not a shotgun, 760. <laughs> That's why it won't take the shotgun shells. Okay. Yeah, so in military bases you'll find military equipment, hospitals you'll find medicine, industrial areas you'll find nails, building equipment, lumber, actually you have to make lumber, planks and things. But yeah, whenever so if you think, oh I need something, particular uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry this tan can of alright yeah, yeah watch me punch this guy out with a can of tuna there you go so two punches to the head with a can of tuna and he's dead that's how easy it is. Here comes another one. What I'll do is let, what I'll do is I'll put this can of tuna away and I'll just punch this one with my hands. There we go, he's dead. Now I am bleeding, so I just need to go somewhere safe, like in here. Now that was quite unusual, he must have hit me with a good shot there. Um. Oh, we've got some rope. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, equip our deadly can of tuna again. Can of uh, sardines, sorry. There's one. Again, I just want to make sure I don't get attacked by more than one at once. Because that would spoil your day. Right, there's definitely one inside that building. I think we'll leave them to it. Just going to see if we can find... The king of melee weapons, which is the, um, the axe. The axe is the one shot, well, one hit kill to the head, if you can whack him in the head. Which isn't that difficult to do. Once you get used to it, you'll be one shotting zombies all the time. OK. 
Okay, so we know there's nothing down that way. Somebody's not very happy over there. Right, so we've got our first sign. So we've got... We can look at the map, and we know if you've got the I Survive map, which is incredibly useful, you can just start typing the name in Russian. <laughs> so if you put, like, NYC... Right, that NYCTA, that's a town called Pushta. So I can click on that on the map, and that will appear. So I know... Oop. I hear you. It's a uh, deadly can of sardines there. Um, so that's three kilometres to my... well, left. Which means that... Uh, so three kilometres that way, so inland. And also, then, one kilometre in front of me is again I could start typing it but so we've got a back backwards E so we put E into the I suppose E N E so that's Electrovorst so I know I've got the big city of Electrovorst right in front of uh, me so I'm pretty sure I know exactly where I am on the map now in fact I know exactly where I am the, uh, I'm in the map so I've got Electrovorst to my this way or we could go inland um, to push this. So what I'll aim to do is, because you know, I we've got water, but we've got. In fact, we just we haven't got anything, have we? Because we, we haven't got any food left, and I haven't got a melee weapon. What my priority now is going to be to go back to the um, beach, and I will go to the beach. What's that in there? And I'll go to Electro. It's another flat cap. I'm going to go to Electro via the beach because there's no point running along the road, the coast road. You might as well run along the beach because then again, you'll find those little um, those little boats. Now I have picked up a virus. Great. Right, okay, so we're probably coming to the outskirts of Electro, so I want to head down to the beach and see if we can pick up a few more supplies before we start hunting through the town. And again, towns, if you were playing on a public server, you'd be thinking, oh, this is dangerous. You know, there's going to be people around. You get griefers, you get bandits who just enjoy killing fresh spawns, um, all sorts of nasty people. We're on the private server. In fact, where I am now in our private server, this is the safe zone. So there's no shooting of uh, anybody. In fact, you're not allowed to rob uh, bases. Um, you can... In fact, you, can, you can't do anything nasty in, in the safe zone. Um, the rules we kind of came up with was in the safe zone, um, you can build, you can do whatever you like, but no... No nasty stuff to any other players or bases and stuff. And then our hostile zone, which is in the northwest, um, you can kill other players, but you're still not allowed to damage bases or steal things from bases, steal cars or, or, or you know, be a vandal or anything like that. Because it takes so long, even on the private server, it takes so long to gather resources together that it would spoil the fun of the game. Um, Right, here we go. There's something on this boat. What have we got? Some can tuna, which we can undo. Which is good. So let's open the tuna. So I really want to find us a, a knife now. Health's okay, although we have picked up a virus, but most of the times in, in uh, 1.04 you pick up stuff, pick up viruses. Secret. And obviously we need some new shoes as well. What's that in there? Another tin of tuna. 
So we've now got two spare tins of food. No way of opening them yet though. Right, there's some shoes in here. So we'll take those sneakers. These ones aren't ruined yet. No, they're just worn, so they're still okay. But we've got the other ones in reserve, ready for when they get totally damaged. Uh, I'm going to take that skirt purely so that when I get a knife I can make some rags pretty quickly. zombies in here. Other essentials I like to have, um, though I probably won't get them until we go further inland, which probably won't be in the first hour, are things like um, uh, a compass. I think a compass is pretty much essential for doing advanced navigation as you get further inland so that you can take shortcuts and stuff. Right, so now we're actually in Electro. What I can do now is I can look at the I Survive map on my PC or my phone and I can look to see where the water pump might be because I'm going to need some water. Okay, so the water pump's quite a long way into town, past the fire station. Okay. We can have a look around just to see if we can pick up some some goodies, some food maybe. Or again, this knife is the thing we really want. Sounds like I'm only going to have two rags left after this. So I really need to find a knife. more food, that's good. Right, what you can see here, there's a... These are very dangerous, this. This is water in here, but it's it's rank. It's, it's fetid water, never... Like, if, if I jump on here... You'll see I'll get the option to drink. You do not want to drink that stuff. <laughs> it will make you very ill. Right, what have we got on top of here? Remember, don't slide down ladders because you'll ruin your gloves and if you're not wearing gloves you'll end up with cut hands. Normally I'd go up and I'd whack that zombie, but because I've got so few bandages left, I just need to take it easy until I find this knife and I can craft some more bandages. It's 
See now I'm even closing doors behind me to stop zombies potentially coming after me. Still no knife. Zombie there, zombie there. Ah, gun. Nice. Christmas lights. So, we've definitely got one aggro, aggro zombie outside. Maybe two. It's not too good. Are there any bullets in that gun? That one. See how we? I can't. I let 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 it in, and then close the door so the other one can get in. That was meant to happen for that one as well. I'm bleeding again. One rag left. Excellent. Okay. Sometimes I wish they'd give zombies more stuff. My clothes are looking a little bit worse for it, as is my bag. If I don't repair it soon, it's going to become ruined and anything that becomes ruined if you take it off you can't put it back on again um, and things like th clothes use lose their um, ability to be say say a waterproof jacket or something that wouldn't be waterproof anymore once it's ruined shoes stop protecting your feet um, so yeah you do have to be careful Doctor, right, that's brilliant. Ask and you shall find. So what I can do now is if I put my bag into my hands, put my duct tape, I'm going to have to drop something, drop the binoculars, put the duct tape in my inventory, then we can combine the two and I can repair my dry bag. Which is now warned that you can't get them better than worn. That deadly weapon 
burlap sack. Burlap saps are cool. You can make um, apps some sticks and some rope and stuff. You can you can make a makeshift backpack, but you tend to find backpacks. Ooh, a barrel. Ooh, should have a look in it. Right, it's empty. Barrels are really important later, sort of in mid-game, because they give things um, persistence as well. So anything you put in a barrel will stay there. We'll leave it there for now, though. So we're still desperately looking for a knife, so I can craft some more bandages because we are down to our last bandage, which is very, very, very dangerous. A shovel. Brilliant. So we can now bury things. And they will have persistence. All oh, trains. Trains are really good. Find all sorts of stuff in trains. Yay, we got a knife. Right, so. Let's put our knife on a quick thing. We can put our sardines away now as well. Then we can put two hands. In fact, we want to drop that. Equip our knife. And let's crack some rags. That's great, so we've now got more rags, so we can now put them in our hand. I think we can combine these together so they take up less space. Assign them a quick slot so we can get at them easier. Brilliant. Let's get our knife out. Although, to be honest, actually, I think... Well, this, this, we'll see how we do with the steak knife. Epoxy putty. I'm going to use for that at the moment, so we'll leave that. Box headlight bulbs. Not planning on getting a car going anytime soon. Another rifle. Probably got one of those. What I'd really like is a shotgun rather than a rifle. Crop hiking pants. But nothing wrong with having a few more rags. All we want to make sure though is that the rags, see they're dirty rags, don't want dirty rags. Dirty rags can get you infected. Nice clean rags. That's what we want. Okay, so we've got spare rags now. So let's let's take stock of where we are. We've got a, we've got some cool stuff. We've got a shovel, so we can bury things. We've got a dry bag, so we can bury our dry bag if we wanted with stuff in. How are we doing? For, okay, so we've got um, two plastic water bottles. We've got so, and we've got one, two, two tins of food. Three tins of food. We've got. Two tins of sardines and a tin of tuna. What should we have? Let's have a tin of sardines. So our priority next is to find the water uh, pump in town ha and fill up those water bottles. Um, put our knife away. Where's our open tin of tuna? See this. got spare shoes which is good we've got a pistol we've got a rifle so you know we've got all the basics we just need a little bit more uh, food and drink right, there's the fire station we should be able to find an axe in the fire station actually we'll have a look in here for I 
don't need a glow stick. Oh, some multivitamin pills. Oh, some 9 by 19 So, multivitamin tool pills are good. Um, if you find them, and all you do is every time you log in, just pop a couple of them, and they'll keep your immune system um, strong. So that if you have got a virus like I have, it'll be less likely to take hold. It'll also mean that you're less likely to get a virus in the first place. Oh, another barrel. It's empty. Um, I'll quickly show you this though, but what you can do with barrels is you can't go very fast, but you can take them somewhere else. So you could make like a barrel base somewhere and then you can put them back down again. Now, ah, good thing about barrels, if you can't put it down, just go into here and just drop them. Then it'll drop it anyway. <laughs> so you can put them down on uneven ground and things like that. Right, so what we want from here is a axe. There we go. Right, we've got axe now. I'll tell you what, I'm going to drop this rifle because it's no good. So we've got a firefighter's axe. Uh, let's just quick equip that to there. And um, what we'll do is I'll show you. Probably isn't much else in here to be else in here, unless I wanted to dress up as a firefighter. I could do actually. How's my Jacket is. So my hoodie's pristine. What condition is this in? It's damaged. It will give me more protection from the elements, though, than my hoodie. Let's see if we can find some matching trousers. that on top of there. Well, this is the um, practice tower, isn't it? We don't want to go up here. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the I Survive map. So I found the found my bearings. I know where the fire station is because this is where I am. I've got my axe. So now all I have to do is go up here, go round to the left a little bit, and then on the right will be where I want to be. What we'll do. Let me show you. All right. Okay. Gotta be careful. See, there's two zombies. Always you want to avoid a situation where there's two zombies. Oh, here we go. Here's another classic way of figuring out where you are. The amazing tourist maps that you find all over the place that are actually hiding. So you can see where he's at. Whoop. Here he comes. Right. One shot kill. <laughs> oh, has that zombie got some stuff on them? Some more. Gosh, I love my tuna. Right, so now what I'll do is I'll show you on this one as well. What you need to do is you start... It, the axe swings pretty slowly. So you need to start swinging it before the zombie gets to you. Here he comes. So I'm getting ready, and then... Dunk! <laughs> e, Jester and Moxie showed me all this one. They're really good. But the axe isn't that great if you've got lots of zombies around you. In fact, always remember, one zombie's easy to deal with. Two zombies, all of a sudden things get go bad very quickly. Three zombies and you can be dead in no time. If I was on a public server, I'd take them out by helmet. But this is private. I'm in the safe zone. You know, I can I can have quite a casual look if I like. Um, 
don't really need anything industrial. These towns and cities by the coast, like Electro um, and uh, Cheneris, they're all right, but looting in them in them can be a bit boring. Um, and you, so I tend to think, you know, just just get and then move on. Right, let's make sure I'm going in the right direction now. You know, get inland. Um, ooh, what's that down there? Another plastic water bowl. See, this is good. In fact, what would do that water bowl? has got some water in it. Let's drink this. Because the, the map is prettier, I think, away from the um, cities. The game definitely performs better away from the cities. Um, right. Okay, so... We're looking for... If we go through these back streets here, we should come across the water fountain. We might as well have a look in here while we're here. Zombie. Oh. Right, I think the water fountain should be. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that was dangerous, that. You can hear all of them, can't you? They are not happy bunnies. Can I hit that guy? Can I hit them through the wall? Hmm. Now, what I'm going to do now is just wait a little bit for them to calm down. Is my f what I could do... Yeah, it's pristine, so I don't need to sharpen it. Do I need to sharpen this? Right, my steak knife is worn, so if I combine that with my... Oh, maybe you can't. What do we do the other way around? Now, normally I'd just whack these zombies on the head, but because there's three or four of them, I don't feel super confident doing that. my bearings a little bit now.
Okay, so there's a military tent here. Got some more tuna. Again, on a public server, military tents, be very, very, very careful because there could be anybody around. Box 45 ACP, but on this server, it's cool. That looks really knackered, that jacket, is it? That's only worn. And my firefighter's jacket is damaged, so let's get rid of the firefighter's jacket. Let's wear this one. Move everything over. Don't forget my axe. Ah, some boots. So what we'll do, we'll ditch the sneakers. Let's put the boots on. So we've got some nice boots and we've got some spare boots as well. I always think you should carry spare boots. Okay, so let's have a look at the map. So I'm on a military. Hmm. Have we come past the police station? That's a hospital there, I think. That's a shop. So might as well go in here while we're in the area, see if there's any food around. What have we got? The cupboards are bare by the look of it. Let's see if we can work out where we are. It's the problem when you fight zombies, you end up running around losing where you are. Okay. Can't see that military tent on the map. So we need to find another... And the, we got the hospital, didn't we? Pretty sure this is a hospital. So a quick look inside. Or is it a school? Some sort of public building. Okay, it's not a hospital. Right, we need to get... So, this is kind of the main square, I think. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I can see the... Right. Okay, yeah. I can see the tent on the map now. So, yeah, I've come a long way past... Have a look. Let's try and figure this out. So the tent is there, which should be a okay. 
Camino that way. There's the docks that way. So I've come down from there. So I should go this way. And then we sh there's a chance we'll see a police car on our left. Right, yeah, here's the police station. Which we might as well have a look in as we're here. Stab vest. Again, if this was a public server, I would take it, you know, for protection, but. I'm in the safe zone. There's no real need for that. Yeah, often they are disappointments, police stations. I won't bother going up on the roof, because we are coming up to our hour in. So we turn left now. Let's see if we can avoid this zombie. And then behind these houses should be ooh, another zombie there bingo there it is that's the power of the I survive map so if you haven't heard about it yet the I survive map you can d uh, you, you can get a free app for your phone uh, iOS Android um, uh, or you can run it on your PC so I have my laptop set up near my um, near my uh, PlayStation. Ooh, what have we got here? Some Christmas lights there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill my bottle up. It's always quicker to fill your bottle up and then drink it rather than um, just sip from the from the pump. If you're on a public server again I would fill my bottle up and I would run to cover. I wouldn't just be sitting here doing this like this. So what I'm going to do now is we fill this bottle up And then we'll fill this bottle up. And then we'll fill this bottle up. And then what we'll do is So I think probably my next move will pro would probably be to head, uh, I fancy going up the east coast, I think, and doing a bit of exploring, but we'll do, we'll just come in here, um, and you can kind of see, so it's, we're an hour in, we survived the first hour of a public server, um, let's see what we've managed to get, you know, we've got all the basics, we've got a knife so we can cut bandage, cut um, clothes for rags, which we can use as bandages, we've got one, two, one, why isn't that working properly? One, two. Oh, there's, yeah, my water bottles are hidden, aren't they, in my jacket? Um, three, four, five items of food. 
So that's enough to keep us going for a long time, you know, an hour plus, probably even more than that. You can keep going with that much food. And I've got three water bottles full of food. I've just had a full drink as well. Um, we've got an axe for one-shotting zombies. We've got a spade for burying things, should we want to. Um, we've got some masking tape. Well, not sorry, we've got some duct tape to fix our... Um, uh, a bag if we want to I've got a I've got a nice jacket my, my trousers aren't too great um, but I am wearing gloves but um, in terms of weapons we've got a pistol but we have got some ammo so we've got some 45 ACP when we find uh, a, a magazine for a pistol we've got a gun cleaning kit to sort that out we've got a spare pair of shoes which again is pretty much vital um, and there's that shotgun ammo there 9x19, so if we get a 9x19 pistol or submachine gun, that we could do there. Um, and we've got, well, we've got two sh two shotgun shells, but it isn't the end of the world. So there we go, that's surviving the first hour on a private server. As you can see, it's a lot less stressful than a public server. Um, you don't have to worry about getting um, griefed by someone who likes killing fresh spawns. And you can just really concentrate on having a chill time, getting the stuff you need to then springboard you to where you want to go in the map. So now, because I can survive for at least an hour without having to worry about looting anything, I can I can trundle off wherever I like. You know, I can I could avoid towns. I could go west in our safe zone and go and see Moxie or one of the true survivors and pick up some supplies from them. Or I can head up the east coast and go and do some uh, reconnaissance up that way. But there we go. Hopefully this video hasn't been too boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, and giving you some hints and tips for surviving your first hour on a private server. Right, so more about private servers. So we run our PlayStation private servers with Nitrado and there'll be a link in the YouTube description down below, box down below. So if you fancy having a private server, obviously you've got to pay for them. But if you click on the link and go through, I get a little bit of cut and that goes towards running um, the channel, running the Discord, running the private service that'd be cool and it's a great way of enjoying a more chilled out version of daisy now don't imagine you need a big community to do this as well um you can buy servers in different slots so you could just buy like i think you could buy like a four person server which is the price of a couple of posh coffees a month and even if it was just you you can have your own p personal version of churnerus where there's no gits on it ready to shoot you when you're going around the military base and you can really get into the survival side of um, Daisy and importantly I think learn all the mechanics you know how to how to loot how to uh, build things how to put things together what sort of guns you can practice shooting zombies with the gun so that when you go back to the private server you actually know how to do some th do stuff quickly um, when you've got the pressure uh, of uh, people there who you know who want to kill you anyway so there we go. Put your questions and comments down below. Thank you very, very much for watching, as I said, and I will see you again soon.